this. Now, the question that I had for you was, you know, knowing that we're exposed to so many stressors already, I mean, there is air pollution, uh, there is water pollution, there is toxicity in food, uh, there's a tremendous amount of stress already on us. Would you say that electropollution being one of those spokes on the wheel or the Wi-Fi um, access that we all on one hand enjoy but on the other hand is that additional stressor that, that kind of may tip the scales for us from a stress perspective and from a, a human toxicity perspective that, you know, that is what puts us over the edge? Is that possible? Well, Alfred, I think it's worse than that. Uh, because, you see, all of those other stressors, all of those uh, environmental exposures, uh, we're able to develop compensations for those. Our immune system is able to respond to them, uh, and our nervous system is able to respond to them. But what we have here with the Wi-Fi and the damage from the information-carrying radio waves is that our immune system becomes compromised. So if uh, the information-carrying radio waves, the Wi-Fi type of exposure, is more serious than one of the spokes in the wheel because it makes these young children more susceptible to all of those other stressors, all of those other exposures. And to make matters worse, uh, Alfred, is that we have now, in the Safe Wireless Initiative, been doing testing uh, in schools uh, uh, around, around the world. We, we have Safe Wireless Initiative uh, branches now in, um, in the United Kingdom, in Ireland, uh, in, uh, in Canada, also in uh, Channel Island of Jersey. Uh, and when we look at the amounts of information-carrying radio waves, in those schools, it is interesting that because of the construction of most of these schools, you know, schools have an interesting construction because it's public public uh, construction. Usually, it's uh, less expensive construction. There's a lot of metal. Uh, there are a lot of metal walls, and what happens is that the information carrying radio waves, the dangerous waves, become trapped in the schools. The schools actually become resonant cavities. So the exposures in the schools from Wi-Fi are, are greater because those information carrying radio waves cannot get out. So, so not only are we talking about a fundamental disruption of the immune system that makes these young people more susceptible, we are also talking about an environment that concentrates the dangerous radio waves and it underscores once again how tragic a mistake this is for us to be putting Wi-Fi in schools across the world. Well, I, what I find very interesting about this discussion, Dr. Kahlo, is uh, when not only when looking at the angle of the students, but also looking at the angle from the teachers and the professors. Because, um, you know, these are individuals that um, are highly regarded, many of them, uh, that are very educated and that um, have a huge responsibility on grooming our kids and our teenagers. They spend oftentimes more time with our kids and teenagers than the parents do. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, I know we talked about kids and teenagers, but also from the aspect of a teacher, meaning an adult being exposed for an extended period of time to this uh, information carrying radio waves and to that type of stressor. You know, what do you think uh, from a behavioral pattern perspective from a focus pattern perspective, uh, what can we expect there? What, what do you anticipate happening to these individuals that have such a large responsibility to educate our youth? Well, I mean, you know, a couple of things uh, come to mind, uh, Alfred. The first is that uh, most of these teachers are, are in these schools uh, for many, many, many years so that uh, while the children uh, will move through a middle school, for example, in three years or through a high school in four years um, and certainly be exposed during that time, the teachers sometimes are there for 25, 30, 40 years. So that you're talking about now looking at a chronic exposure to something that is very, very dangerous. Uh, and we actually have been talking to uh, many representatives of teachers' unions because this is the kind of thing that, uh, that moves into the workers' compensation uh, area. Uh, it, uh, when you have chronic exposure to these information-carrying radio waves, we're, we're not only talking about uh, an inability to focus and uh, you know, temp uh, tempers may be becoming a lot more uh, uh, prevalent, you know, uh, teachers losing patience. All of those are things that we would expect 
based on the exposure, but more seriously, uh, we would expect things like brain tumors and uh, uh, leukemia, lymphoma, those types of chronic conditions. So the first thing uh, is you're, you, know, you, you really are talking about an occupational hazard that uh, up until this point has not even been recognized. Uh, and then the, the other thing uh, is that um, you, know, you, are, you are talking about uh, a profession that requires uh, the ability to, to learn, uh, the ability for uh, high levels of cognition, and uh, the ability for um, uh, very, very good communication skills. And what we would expect to be seeing here uh, are our teachers losing their ability to, uh, to have patients to uh, have that cognition because of the disruption of inter, uh, intracellular communication. Uh, so, so all of these, all of these items are are very, very important from not only the student's perspective but also from the teacher's perspective. And uh, I, I, I will say that on May 21st, uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, Panorama, which is the the United Kingdom's uh, version of 60 Minutes or 2020, is going to have a very, very provocative uh, one-hour documentary special on Wi-Fi in schools, and that will be May 21st, and uh, the listeners should be able to pick that up uh, on, the, on the Internet. And what's important is that I know uh, I have par participated in this uh, uh, documentary, and they will be covering all of these angles, the teacher angle, the, the student angle, uh, the, the fact that Many of the conditions that we would expect from the information carrying radio waves, difficulty sleeping, unexplained anxiety, you know, difficulties in focus, those are, those are uh, symptoms that most people would not even recognize as symptoms. So that what they're, what they're going to be focusing on in this documentary is the need to shock people into paying attention. Uh, so I would in encourage people to mark their calendars. Uh, this is going to be a very, very important, uh, very, very important program. Uh, and Alfred, back to your earlier point, you know, it's interesting that something like this comes out of Europe. Uh, it doesn't come out of the United States. Uh, you know, we have had, for example, many, uh, many opportunities in the Safe Wireless Initiative to work with schools. And invariably, invariably, every time there is somebody on the school board who is tied to uh, one of the cell phone companies uh, on the board of trustees of private schools, and the next thing you know, uh, the whole effort is shut down. So uh, this is uh, one of the problems uh, in the United States that they don't have in Europe is that the, um, the power of the, of the industry to uh, effect their will on the system is much greater here. Uh, we seem to be much more responsive here to uh, monetary pressures, and uh, that is why uh, something uh, like this very important program on Wi-Fi will uh, come out of Europe first uh, before the United States.